guys! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you guys? Most importantly, Will. There he is. How are you? Hey. What's wrong, Will? Is something on your mind? So, I know we have a lot to talk about talk about today don't choke there was a nintendo direct and we got to talk yeah. about it it was a big yeah. nintendo direct uh uh-huh. but i want to waste some of your time okay i put in the, i just put in the keep just now the poster for the new obi-wan kenobi show yeah that's coming up does that remind you of anything that picture yeah the the the, the statue that i have it's the exact same image is the statue don't choke do not you're eating exactly you're gonna throw up <laughs> so yeah wh- that's wh- it where do i it- find that statue you have it i know i don't have it here <laughs> did i take a picture of it somewhere it was a sideshow collectibles statue right sideshow collectibles obi-wan statue yeah uh Okay, no. Okay, no. Okay, yes. Yes. No, this isn't it. This is a shitty one. What the hell is that? <laughs> this is a Garbo one. 160? Psh! Get out of here. No. Uh, Where's the cool one? That's These are the all like... Figure they, they made they're it all, out of the cool They're one. like almost it, but they're yeah. not it. God, how limited was this thing? I don't think it was that limited. It was very popular. It was very popular because it was awesome looking. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I can see the action figure that's based on the... Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. Didn't they do something in an old promotional poster with uh, an action figure of uh, Palpatine? What do you mean? Didn't they use an action figure of Palpatine for an actual poster? Maybe. I remember that being like a whole. Yeah. Like a whole thing. Yeah. But if you zoom in, that is definitely Ewan McGregor. Uh, It looks sick. Yeah. I'm down. May 25th. Can't wait. It'll be fun. Did you also notice Pac-Man? It'll be better than Boba Fett. (laughs) Pac-Man makes an appearance. Does he? Yeah, right there. Oh yeah, a little pre- nice Pac-Man for you. There you uh, go. anyway, uh, guys, hello. Today was a big day. Yes. Uh, first, I want to thank all you, all you people on the other side of this camera. Hi, uh, J Buggy. Thanks for the fifty months. I didn't even know there were that many. Damn. Uh, what a direct he says. Uh, Dark type with a hundred bits. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, bro, I can't wait now, Nintendo, why, LOL. But he said that in all caps, so imagine yeah. he's yelling it. Uh, T.O. Kenobi, who's probably very excited what we just talked about, said oh, yes. Carby. But I want to play that. You won't be able to hear this, but the Italian lady said it really funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Carby. That was funny. Uh, BG Main, thank you for the prime. Not going, to, not going to New York fashion. Thank you for the subscription. <laughs> Indie list, thank you for the sixteen months. Nintendo Switch Sports now with Boss Baby Matt M- Badminton vibes. Okay, thank you, Indie List. <laughs> Dark Tide with a hundred bits. Uh, in this household, we stand Carby. That's true. Uh, Spoopy Girl, thanks for the two gifted subs. RP, thanks for the 100 bits. Welcome, everyone, to this special direct edition of Wolf Den Live, I mean podcast. Yes. Garcia, thank you for the yeah. 100 bits. Thank you for happy Nintendo Direct. I direct to you, too. Fadud, Dud, thank you for the gifting a sub. And Spoopy Girl, thank you for the 200 bits. Forgot to wish you guys congrats last week with your new edition. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. We have a, we have a new edition of the podcast. Will's child will be on every yes. podcast. <laughs> Two time back to back. Yeah, Dad. We'll, we'll, we'll discord him in. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Alec is baking. Thank you for the sixteen months, Bob. You got Strikers and Sports, and I got Square Enix nerd shit. It's true. You and Kevin Kenson. This was a big direct. So yes. I I was a little scared today because I'm working on a video. It's a banger of a video, and I was hoping it would go out tomorrow. But the Nintendo said, "Fuck 
you, Bob. <laughs> we got things to announce, and we don't care about you. So, uh, so I was worried today that if there was any big announcements that I'm gonna care a lot about, I would have to drop everything and make a video real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of big announcements and a lot of uh, very exciting things, but I didn't feel like there was anything that I could like add my two cents about. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, it certainly was newsworthy and there was a lot packed into there, but I don't know if there was any one thing that I would just drop everything for. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like the last time there was a big direct that I dropped everything for, it was the N Nintendo 64 games. Yes. I dropped everything and immediately made a video because that was a big deal to me. And yeah. I had a lot to say about that. Um, mm -hmm. But for this, there's a lot of good stuff that I have some things to say, but honestly, a lot of it is just like, they did this and it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have anything like extra to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to see some like in-depth thoughts, uh, go check out Kevin Kenson's video because <laughs> in the thumbnail, he's got Live A Live and Chrono Cross and yes. uh, what looks like Xenoblade Chronicles. So if you want some in-depth nerd shit, go check out Kevin Kenson. <laughs> but we're just going to go over it and give you uh, our limited two cents about uh, everything yes. that we know so far. How about that? Uh, this is an article that we're going through from Games Radar. I mean, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. But, but this... it's nice to have it all listed out with a little blurb so we can talk about it. Yeah, so this lays everything out in, in order. Which we love. Mm -hmm. We love to see it. Yeah. Uh, start. They started off today with Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. And I had a little sigh of relief because I was like, oh, good, Fire Emblem. I don't have to drop everything and make a video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they started off. Uh, don't don't play the music. They started off at a nice crisp four frames per second today. <laughs> Uh, picking up where the original Fire Emblem Warriors left off, we've got another Musu-like spin on the Fire Emblem formula launching later this year. Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes uh, comes to the Switch on June 24th, and it'll be resurrecting the characters and settings of the beloved Three Houses uh, for a brand new adventure. Just like Hyrule Warriors in 2020, we can expect a brand new twist on the world we've come to know, plus hours upon hours of slicing and dicing through hordes of enemies. I did not know there was an original Fire War, uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. There is? That's what it says. My God. I also didn't realize it's called Three Hopes. It's like yeah. houses, but but it's a different word. Yeah, it's like one of those... It's like uh, the Kingdom Hearts deal where all the spinoffs have stupid names. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. So, I mean, I'm not big on the Warriors games. I also just learned yesterday that the Warriors games are called Musou games. I learned just now that they're called Musou games. Why don't we call them Warriors games? That's They're all called Warriors. I don't know. I guess Musou is like a style. It's kind of like how over here, like Metro, we call them Metroidvanias, but they're, they, they definitely have a better name. <laughs> Right, like search action. That's maybe not a better name. <laughs> that's, that's what. What, what is that? that's a Kojima. That's a Kojima fied yeah. version. Yeah. So I learned that they're called Muso games from mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. There was uh, like a like a leak or something that said um, they're interested in making a Mario one. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what the hell that would be or look like, but. Whatever. Maybe that'll get me to play a, a Muso game. I mean, a Muso. I mean, we got a Mario RTS. Why not a Muso Mario game? That's true. I, I mean, I, I would honestly prefer a Muso to, game to a is a Japanese hack and slash type video game that has the player playing as a character that fights through hundreds of simple enemies and destroys them with relative ease. Yeah, as it just say, warriors. I've been saying warriors because they I all think, have warriors well, in the title. Well, because warriors is like the main one, you know. That's like the most famous. No, but yeah, but it. Well, well, no, that's Dynasty Warriors, and then Hyrule Warriors, and now Fire Emblem Warriors. But so the warrior Dynasty Warriors and Hyrule Warriors are all made by the same company. 
I think the Muso are the Muso games not Warriors series. Uh, Muso literally refer to. Yeah, Koei Tecmo makes them all. Koei Tecmo makes the Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, and Hyrule Warriors. Muso, or reading as Wu Shang in Chinese, is an umbrella term for powerful moves used by playable characters and enemies, enemy officers in Warriors games, and a term that is usually the Japanese equivalent of Warriors. True. Muso, a stronger Muso attack. Oh, it's a specific attack. This is like the Shotos in, in fighting games. Yeah. We're getting into the weeds here. Yeah. Koei Fanda, Muso. It's the same. Okay, yeah. whatever. I'm going to forget that word <laughs> frequently and just keep calling it. Uh, I'll probably keep calling it Warriors games. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, not going to play this. <laughs> So next was more advanced warrior, uh, advanced <laughs> advanced wars, advanced wars, not advanced warriors. Reboot camp. So this, uh, you gotta stop playing the music. This is uh, we know about this already though. I don't understand why. Why are we yes. hearing about this? Again? Um, uh, we got a fresh look at some new modes coming, as well as the refresh looks, and uh, all the characters will now be voice acted. Whoa. Uh, oh, that's it, is, cool. it showed off. It showed off new features like a fast forward mode and the ability to restart uh, a skirmish instead of just like redoing an entire scenario. So they added more. They showed off the quality of life improvements to the game. I'm big time down for uh, not reading. Yeah. So I'm not into there's, strategy there's games. This, there's a lot of reading in this game. I'm not into strategy games, but. Mm -hmm. People have been going nuts about this, and it seems like simplified enough that maybe I might uh, like it a little bit. Is there a demo? Uh, no, but it's uh, you can pre-order it now, and it'll be available on April eighth. Okay. Uh, if they release a demo, I will try it. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. want to buy the whole ass game just to play an hour of it and then realize I don't like it. Uh. The chat's already saying I will hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate most things. All right, yeah. what else do we got? Oh, this one was a bit uh, was kind no of No Man's Sky. This was the very Nintendo surprising. Switch edition. Yeah. Uh complete with all the major updates that have launched for the game. This is the complete No Man's Sky experience, but now for the Nintendo Switch. Uh I was very surprised by this. So I yeah. did they say cross progression? I don't no, I didn't see that. Because I definitely don't want to, you know, have to redo right. anything. I mean, No Man's Sky is, it's like, you know, it's all about like collecting stuff and yeah. and exploring more of the worlds and stuff. So like, if you already played like thousands of hours of No Man's Sky and explored all these different worlds, you're going to want to take that over to the Switch. So yeah. I'd hope that that's part of it. Uh, I don't see anything about... What I did notice, though, was that there's a third-person mode. And I didn't know that that was a thing in this game. Yeah, that, that so they added a lot since launch, you know? Yeah, apparently, yeah. So that's one of the things. I think that uh, there's, like, spoilers with that. Like, with the... with. Like your character, like they didn't want, like, because when I first played the original game, you couldn't see your character at all. Right, and I think that's yeah. like part of the story is like who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I I think that's why they were they're kind of like hidden about that. Um, but anyway, uh, if you've ever been interested in No Man's Sky, uh, they added a lot more to it, so it is yeah. worth playing again now. I remember playing it and it was okay. I had a decent time, but I also had my expectations in check because I. Everything they were saying about it. I have a video on the main Wolf Den channel talking about how everybody's gonna fucking hate this game when it comes out because they got their expect they don't have their expectations in check. Yeah. Um anyway. Five years, Jesus. Oh my god, it's been five years. Yeah, it's had five years of updates. I'm the old seafood guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh next big big game time, big drop. Mario Strikers Battle League. There is a brand new Mario Strikers game in route, and it's called Mario Strikers Battle League. 
This soccer-inspired Super Mario spinoff is heavy on the offense, and for the first time in the series, it will feature gear that you can equip to change your appearance and stats. You'll also be able to utilize a new Hyper Strike ability enabled by activating an orb that appears on the field, uh, which you'll need to grab while your opponent's distracted and will let you score two goals rather than one. In terms of multiplayer options, eight players can now compete on one Switch system, while there's also an online club mode for, uh, for support for up to 20 players per club, arriving June 10th. You can pre-order it today. Scoring two goals at once is kind of ridiculous. That's gonna. Yeah. That's like when I heard that, I was like, "Oh, here we go with the Mario Kart bullshit, <laughs> with the Mario Party." Like, I'm yeah. losing here. Let me get an advantage. Um, because Mario Strikers is one of the more ruthless uh, Mario oh, sports yeah. games. It's yeah. like, it's it's like if you're behind, it's because you suck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I really hope that they keep that and that this game is like an actual like competitive soccer game. Yeah. Uh uh it has I mean, I mean it, it I am I'm, I'm I'm down for some of this imagery. We got the the manga shit going on here, but uh yeah. they have like armor. It reminds me of the concept art for that like wrestling and volleyball game like that they were trying to pitch. Yes. Yeah, that's immediately what I thought of when I saw this that they were reviving that idea except no one's like legitimately beating each other up you know look at freaking toad though look at cute ass toad with his armor yeah uh i'm super down for this i mean it's been a really long yeah. time since mario strikers and i i played i didn't play strikers uh till like 2013 like i played it super late uh, oh wow yeah did uh, you play but, the original or the one on the wii no, i played it on the gamecube yeah that's the first one uh it was awesome yeah, we had a nice little little uh, little land party with it. It was sick. Um, so I'll definitely play this. Hopefully, the online is good. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, uh, that we can just you know squad up and uh, and there won't be any any weird stuff because I know a lot. Well, some I think of the... it's... Go ahead. I was gonna say I think it's cool that you can form clubs for up to twenty people to join, so that you mm -hmm. can have your own squad. That you can roll up, uh, you know, into other people's games with, you know. Oh, or like a like easier, a uh, like a clan, like a Call of Duty clan. Yeah, basically. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I just, you know, a lot of these Mario uh, 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 online games, they have weird ways to like to like lobby up. And like play against yeah. other people and stuff. They have these weird restrictions. So I'm hoping that there's nothing crazy like that. When is this out? June 10th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pre order today. Okay, cool. I'm down. Also, yeah, we'll talk more about some sports later. Yeah. Uh, but for now, we have S'more Splatoon. Splatoon 3. Uh, they showed off the Salmon Run uh, mode in the game. Uh, might not have a final release date just yet, but we'll know it'll launch later in summer. Right now, we are treated to the debut of Salmon Run Next Wave, as Mr. Grizz appears to have opened up shop once again after the events of Splatoon 2 and is taking questionable child labor laws into his own hands. It's Games Radar's words, not mine. <laughs> we saw a new enemy in the uh, Salmonid uh, for the revival of Salmon Run. And even, an even bigger version of his this new enemy appears at the end of the trailer. Splatoon 3 it might still be a ways off, but it's good to know that the excellent co-op Salmon Run mode is alive and kicking in the sequel. Big Salmon. Yeah. There's a Big Salmon Man. I will say I did enjoy the beginning of the trailer where it's like very Call of Duty-ish and you just see the Inklings sitting in the helicopter like Price and Soap and those guys do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought this, that was very funny. This looks like a... Uh, somebody said it on Twitter. This looks like Kraid from from Metroid. Yes, but it's it just did. a big, big, ugly yeah. salmon. Uh, I never played Salmon Run in the in the old Splatoon, so I don't. Right. Know. I don't know how I feel. Uh, uh, I never played much of Spl Splatoon, but um, this looks like fun. It looks like it's just as fun as everything else in the game. I'd love some single player Splatoon stuff. So I'm I'm interested in the yeah. single player of Splatoon 3. I was in I was interested in the single player of Splatoon 2, but it just didn't grab me. Uh I'm hoping right. that this this does a little bit more. 
Uh, next was Front Mission First Remake, and I think I checked out. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even remember this. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it, and they said, so it's called Front Mission First. The title says Front Mission First, but they keep calling it Front Mission 1 Remake. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess uh, they want to drive home that that's what it is. We're remaking the yeah. first Front Mission game. Uh, Square Enix's uh, Mecha Tactic series returns in this ground-up remake of the 1995 Front Mission, uh, letting players control a squadron of armored Wanzer units in, de- in demanding turn-based combat. Uh, the Direct also confirmed that this will be followed by a remake of Front Mission 2. I just saw that. It, it said it at the end yeah. there. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's why I checked out. I saw Square Enix, and then I saw Tactics, and I was like, all right. Let me go. Yeah. Let me go work on this while that's playing. Um, and then there it was followed by Disney Speedstorm, which uh, is another one that uh, like I'm good. <laughs> well, I think what's interesting about this is it's free to play, uh, really? and it will launch across multiple platforms as well as have cross-platform play. It's free to play from Disney. Ew. Yeah. Does so, it have yeah there oh, okay I I thought there was no gameplay. There's like 3 seconds of gameplay. Yeah. Well, in this trailer there is. I in the in the direct they showed off gameplay. Oh, okay. Like this full kinda, gameplay. They and different look, characters had different moves that you can use. Kind of looks a little bit like uh like uh It's from it's from the makers of Asphalt. I was going to say it kind of looks like that. Yeah, from the makers of Asphalt. That this might be kind of cool cuz like yeah, I if you can ram other cars, I might be into it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you can. Can I be a I Star think this Wars like, character? I think it's just uh, regular Disney Pixar characters. I don't want to be Jack Sparrow. No. <laughs> Nobody likes Jack thumbnail. Sparrow anymore. No, it's lame. Uh, well, and speaking uh, of Disney. Speaking of Star Wars, The Force Unleashed 1 is coming to the Switch. <laughs> That's pretty sick yes um it looks like it's gonna be uh the main game plus all the dlc but not only that it's gonna have motion control and the multiplayer component from the wii version weird so it's gonna be like this weird mashup of like the two versions of the game that were released back in 2008 so I really liked The Force Unleashed, but I knew it was a mediocre game while I was playing it. <laughs> but I I liked it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I think the first game was actually pretty good. I think the story did a lot to elevate it. Yes, yes. The problem is the second game, Force Unleashed 2, probably ruined any and all goodwill yeah. towards the first game because that game is garbage. So so that's a, that's I enjoyed playing it but it was like six hours long and the story was abysmal in the second one. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, I remember enjoying playing it, but the same thing with it, with the first game, like uh, the story really carried the first game and yeah. uh, uh, I enjoyed some of the mechanics, but uh, I, I knew the game was, yeah. I was like, all right, this game is, I just like being in this star Wars world really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I, I mean, see, here's the problem. I'm happy we're just getting the first one because the second one's bad, but right. it kind of feels incomplete that they're not also doing the first, the second one. You know, it's kind of like how we got KOTOR 1. Why didn't they port KOTOR 2 to the Switch yet? What are they waiting for? Right. It's it's not that big of a leap to do both games. I thought that's what it was when I first saw it because they didn't say what it was at first. Yeah. I was like, oh, we're getting, uh, what, the second KOTOR? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I I think it's worth I think it's worth playing because I mean there hasn't really been many good Star Wars games unfortunately. <laughs> well, there's been Jedi Fallen Order, and that's it. Yep. Well, so I I really want them to port a uh, uh, Rogue Leader, or or at least some of the Rogue Squadron games because yeah, uh, I tried downloading it onto my uh. uh my Ein Odin, and mm-hmm. it just it that game Rogue Leader has a really hard time emulating. Really, it, it's 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 one of the more most graphically demanding GameCube games. 
so yeah. it it run it's rough so uh yeah if if they could port that to the switch that'd be really pog champ yeah speaking of porting stuff uh Assassin's Creed the Ezio collection the most iconic assassin of them all is coming to switch as the Assassin's Creed Ezio collection hits Nintendo Switch uh follow Ezio Auditore the refrigerator through Florence <laughs> Rome and Constantinople as you chart the trilogy that established Assassin's Creed as the jewel in Ubisoft's crown uh the entire collection drops February 17th you mean to tell me this wasn't already on the switch that's what I thought I was like well, this is news I, Which ones are on the Switch? I think every other Assassin's Creed game from like the 360 generation. Not the good ones. Not the best ones. <laughs> I'll have to type in my age. Forget it. Yeah, I the think, 3 um, was definitely on there. 3 was, three was, was there. I think Black Flag is on there. And uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue is on there. I loved these. the, the second Assassin's Creed. Yeah, Assassin's um, Creed 2 is great like i will go as far as to say it is great the other two in the collection uh are also good but like it's it yeah. was I, by the third one you were just beating the dead horse yeah you're like i get it so um it's basically one really long game <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and th- i also enjoyed three i liked three yeah three wasn't bad uh in the grand scheme of things but then by I think four th- I, I i got burned out yeah because I play the same game more than four yeah. times. Also, we're Six seem, times we seem to be the we seem to be the only uh, two people on the planet who don't like when Assassin's Creed does boat stuff. Yeah, yeah. Assassin's Creed Four introduced the boat stuff, and I was like, "This no. sucks. I hate doing three, this." Three introduced the boat stuff, right, right, and then four made a whole game out of the boat stuff. Yeah, and I was like, "Come on, I hated that before, and now you're you're doubling down on it." Yeah. Yeah, I uh, maybe it's a good thing Skull and Bones hasn't come out yet. I'm also boat I'm, stuff mode. I'm also the only person who liked the uh, Desmond stuff. You are. You are the only person who liked the Desmond yes. stuff. I liked it. I was like, I can't wait till they do like a whole game in the modern era, and then they made Watch Dogs, and I was like, I regret yeah. everything that <laughs> I asked for. Uh, I actually liked the first Watch Dogs, uh, but then I've heard. I've heard the second one is actually pretty good. Like it's a, a substantial step. They of seem improvement. good. They seem like good games, yeah. but I'm just I just can't do Ubisoft until they make a new game. They've been making the same yeah. games as Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah, and also uh, fire their CEO because he lets creeps run wild in that company. They're all trash. I know every one but... of them. It's like if you get a billion dollars, you become an asshole. But there are level. But there are levels to it. <laughs> true you know there are levels to assholishness that i feel like we can let slide and ubisoft is just as bad as activision in terms of that stuff and people just let them slide so who what's the good what's a good big game company microsoft and nintendo nintendo probably nintendo <laughs> probably nintendo probably well i mean i don't know <laughs> they're too wholesome to to you know they're the nice kind of buttholes they're just they're just really good at keeping it hush hush. Mm-hmm. Devolver Devolver isn't a big mega no. corporation. No, they're like the they're like uh they're like the the little indie rebels. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to say like cause I don't know what happens at EA, but it just seems like they have idiots <laughs> in charge, not assholes, just idiots, just dumb guys. Yeah, yeah they're just not. They're, people, they're, yeah. they're 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 not doing anything like like. They're not Criminal. like it's a different level of evil. <laughs> they just want yeah. your money. They're not trying to sexually assault anybody. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, SD Gundam Battle Alliance. I thought this was Lego Gundam. This pint-sized franchise-spanning take on the venerable Gundam series lets you control three mobile suits in action RPG battles. Ultimately, your quest is to repair the breaks that are sowing chaos across the Gundam universe's many different timelines. But until then, you can just have fun seeing how Wing Gundam would do in a fight against the Big Zam. This legit looks like Lego Gundam. I know. Well, I've SD Gundam, from what I know of the Gundam franchise, and I don't know much... 
but SD Gundam specifically is Super Deformed Gundam. That's like the cute chibi version of Gundam. Wait, it's called Super Deformed? That style is, yeah, SD stands for Super Deformed. That is awesome. I did not know yeah. that. Because <laughs> it's like cute chibi and they're like, this guy's deformed. <laughs> yeah. He's got uh, medical problems from being yeah. this cute. <laughs> like a pug. Yeah. That looks kind of cool though. Yeah. Um I well, I I love Gundam like design, but yeah. I know nothing about Gundam. And and, yeah. and and I'd love to like get into like the the Gunpla, but like uh that's work. I just yeah. want to buy one that's like done to display it, you know what I mean? Well, then that's an action figure. <laughs> Yeah, I want that. Yeah. You know what sucks when I fucking buy an action figure that I think is an action figure and then I take it out of the box and it's a gunpla. And I got to put the whole goddamn thing. Then, yeah. then I just bought myself eight hours of work. Yeah. I have a I have an to... awesome looking Mega Man that I just haven't put together because yeah. it sounds like hell. Do you remember that commercial from like way back in the day for, for gunpla model kits? Uh, it, would, it would just be dudes like in their room with like their hoodies up talking about like how long it took them. It'd just be like, hold on. I don't remember this at all. Level four Gundam five hours, level eight Gundam two hours a night. Level one. They, they had like a nine year old kid level one Gundam one hour. I, I never. Oh, I mean, I am a level one. I did put one together that took like, <laughs> like 45 minutes. It was like a little tiny one. It was, I, I I remember that commercial vividly, and I just think it's so hysterical looking back on it because it literally was just like dudes in Jenko jeans and like hoodie sweatshirts talk, bragging about how long it took them to put together their Gundam models. I don't remember that at all. Let's see if I can find it. I'll I'll tweet about it if I can find it. Uh, let's uh talk about Chrono Cross. Not too much though. <laughs> The Radical Dreamers edition. This unusual sequel to Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, was underappreciated in its own time, but has now secured its own status as a cult classic. And it's coming to the Switch on April 7th in a remastered form with pre-orders open today. This version includes a port of Radical Dreamers, the unconventional text-based RPG, which helps bridge the gap between Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. This actually looks really nice. Yes. I mean, it's like uh, a weird up situation where, like, some of the assets are, like, a high def. And, yeah. But Chrono the polygons Cro look really crisp. But I think this looks pretty cool. Yeah. Chrono Cross, I know, came out on the PS1. And that's actually how I first heard of the series. But then after that, like, all everyone ever talked about was uh, Chrono Trigger is the greatest game of all time. It's the greatest RPG of all time. Blah, blah, blah. And, like, nobody, everybody forgot that Chrono Cross existed. But I remember. You and Kevin Kenson. Yeah. I'm sure Kevin Kenson has put many more hours into this game than I have. <laughs> this, I, I think, uh, now I'm not interested in this at all, but I think this looks really pretty. I think, uh, I think this it's is really cool for people included, who are interested in this. I think it's interesting they included the text-based RPG in it as well mm -hmm. to, like, you know, expand the lore, so to speak. Well, I mean, uh, what is that, like, going to be a couple kilobytes for them? Probably, they, yeah. They could, they could spare that on a Switch cartridge. <laughs> all right. Next up, Big Car Curb. We're only a month or a month or so out from Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and we're getting teased with several new features. Uh, the main one that has drawn quite a few eyebrow raises is the new Mouthful mode, <laughs> which will allow Kirby to take on different forms to his usual copy ability, including turning it into a car, a traffic cone, a crane, and a light bulb. How am I supposed to kill these little dog guys? Do you expect me to want to kill these little cute little furry dog guys? I mean, it, dude, it's Kirby Last of Us. It's it's <laughs> it's every man for himself. You yeah, you got to do what you got to do to survive. Actually, they do. You do kill dogs in The Last of Us. Yeah, and those dogs have names. <laughs> <laughs> we also got a little teaser about how the town in the game will change. Plus, you'll be able to evolve Kirby's classic copy abilities uh, to extend his range of abilities. Which also will, will which will also affect his appearance. Mysterious and seemingly enhanced higher evolution of the copy abilities were also teased, so there's more to come. Do people do like Kirby Nuzlocks or something? Is there a way to make this game harder? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure there will be. Because Kirby games are generally on the easier side. So I'm yeah. sure there's going to be like a, a dedicated hardcore fan base that knows how to do like, you know, a no hit speed run or whatever. Cone mouth. So it looks like Kirby can just put his entire face onto an object and become that object and get an ability yes. from the object. Um, this is somebody's scissor fetish. left. Scissor left. Yeah. Now that one's definitely water balloon mouth. That's definitely somebody's fetish. Yeah. Um. I mean, cool. I'm I'm down. Da- I'm down for this game. I think it'll be. Fun. I think everybody was down for this game from the word go. I think. Yeah. You know, this just is a much more exciting, you know, addition to it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I I just hope it doesn't. It does, like I want to feel like I'm playing the game. I don't want to just feel like I'm right. just like pressing forward and and the game's just playing out in front of me. You know, I I just I hope yeah. it's engaging enough. Uh, but for everything I've seen, looks super interesting so far. So I'm definitely yeah. gonna play it. Uh, next up, we, oh, this is a big deal. MLB the Show. Yes, once a PlayStation exclusive franchise, apparently no longer. Uh, it came out to Xbox last year, and now MLB the Show is bringing its 2022 outing to the Switch. Arriving April 27th, it brings well-known modes like Road Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty, letting you play with just a single Joy-Con. Cross-progression means you can earn and use content across all platforms, and cross-play means that you'll be able to play online against friends on Xbox and PS5. That is crazy that this cross-progression. Yeah. And, and I mean, yeah, yeah I'm cross-play shocked they too. included that. Yeah, like that's... cross play I can see because that's the way everything's doing. But like cross progression is a big deal. Yeah, it's kind of a huge deal. Uh, and this is the first time we're getting MLB at all on the Switch, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's also interesting we're getting cross progression and cross play because this is a Sony first party title. <laughs> yeah, it's and Sony. Sony are the ones who are like, oh, we don't want you fucking playing with other people. Yeah. So so. The fact that it's even available on the Switch is a big deal. And then they yeah. added cross-play and progression. That is double big deal time. Yeah. Any Nintendo Switch Online membership sold separately. Oh, I think you need Nintendo Switch Online. That's another crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Nintendo account required for online features. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, they also, in this trailer, they had like a... They had like a... like a The, the guys talking was like an old like brooklyn dude yeah and then at the very end he's a muppet (laughs) it was very weird yeah i enjoyed it anyway was that wait that's all that oh no i'm looking at the wrong thing next is klonoa maybe i'll finally play this game yes i am excited for this klonoa fantasy revive series is both an absolute mouthful and a two-part bundle containing Klonoa, Door 2, Phantom Isle, and Klonoa 2, uh, Lutina's Veil. Two beloved side-scrolling platformers dating back to 1997. Publisher Bandai Namco didn't specify how much fresh paint was applied to the Switch release, but both games certainly look like the combos... Re- but both games certainly look excellent in the combos reveal trailer. The store page for a Fantasy Revere series also notes two-player co-op which ought to come in handy for given the old school difficulty that these games are known for. Klonoa will arrive on the Switch July 8th. So these are PlayStation games, right? Yes. Original there PlayStation? There was a remake of Klonoa 1 on the Wii, and I don't know how much of that version is going to be in this. But yes, Klonoa 1 and Klonoa... Klonoa 1 came out on the PlayStation, and Klonoa 2 came out on the PS2. This looks like they did a lot of work to it. This yes. does not look like a PlayStation 1 game. Yeah. Uh so yeah, I wonder how much is different. I wonder if it's a yeah. ground up remake or if they just put a fresh coat of paint on it or if they well, took the Wii version and added a little spice to def- it. I don't it's know. It's definitely like a fresh coat of it's definitely like from the ground up remade of the PS1 version. I don't I just don't know how much from the Wii version is going to be in this version of the game. Right. Uh, but I am very excited for this. I'm surprised there aren't any more Klonoa games because they are very good. I just realized Klonoa has Pac-Man on their hat right here. Yes. That's crazy. 
Yes. Namco. Speaking of crazy compilations, we're getting on the Switch. Portal! Every single person should play Portal at least one time yes. in their lives. Portal is one yes. of the greatest games of all time. Everybody needs to experience Portal. Now you can. The first game yes. is only like three hours. Yes. Uh, and it's, it's got a, the second game. A little longer, but still very, very good. And one the of the best main... co-op experiences of all time. Yes. It's got two the completely two... different games in there. Yes. The two main Portal games come to the Nintendo Switch for the first time in Portal Companion Edition, which is expected to arrive sometime this year. It's Portal to Go, and you don't even need to put money down on a Steam Deck to do it. What's not to like? Whoa. Some it's shade. true. They're pretty much, you know, you think about it, Valve pretty much just cannibalized their own market. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I mean. When I saw yeah. this, I'm like, ooh, we're one step closer to Half-Life coming to the Switch. Then I read that, and I'm like, mm, no, no, now they're not going <laughs> to. Damn it. So, yeah, I think the more people who get the chance to play Portal, the better. And I yeah. think Portal 2 is even better uh, with another person. So, uh, and again. Yeah. Portal 2 is two is is two separate games. You're basically getting three games here. You're getting the original yeah. Portal, which is like a two to three hour experience, uh, but it's a fantastic. And then the second Portal, which has a great single player, and then a completely separate, different multiplayer that you can yes. play co-op with somebody else. And it's they're both awesome. So uh, it's worth every penny. Uh Next is uh, for only for Kevin Kenson. <laughs> Live Alive, the ambitious structured story and Japanese exclusive release for Live Alive have made it a holy grail for lovers of SNES RPGs. And now it's set to return on July 22nd with pre-orders open now. Play as a range of unique characters in a history spanning tale and savor those, and savor those fully remastered Octopath-esque 2.5D visuals. Ah. <laughs> I made no I made a note that the stream called it HD 2D. Oh my god, I, I want to throw up. This is a weird trend that they're doing. It looks nice. Yes. I'm I'm cool it with does. it. I think I'll be I, honest, like this looked like something I would give a shot to. <laughs> wow. Because, uh, just because the art style looks like it looks like a good fit for this type of game with the different time periods and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I mean, it, I it, like it I, pretty good. I like the art style. I don't want to play a. Wait, is this not? Yeah, this is turn based, right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's okay. it's a it's a classic JRPG. I just saw platforming. I was like, wait a second. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm like, about to get in here right now. Too. Uh, it, the art style kind of reminds me of Braid a little bit. Yeah, it does kind of look like Braid. Uh, so I think this is really cool looking, but I'm never going to play a JRPG. Who am I? Yeah. Um, but I'm happy for Kevin Kenson. Yeah. Uh, and only Kevin Kenson. And only him. No, anybody else who's interested? I hope, I hope you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, the next one is probably the biggest announcement of the entire day. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but it certainly is a big announcement. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports. A successor to Wii Sports is on the way. Switch Sports is launching on April 29th, bringing bowling, tennis, and chambara back from previous games. On top of those three, there will be new additions like badminton, volleyball, and a version of soccer played with a giant ball using the leg strap that you may recognize from Ring Fit Adventure. A free update in the fall will add golf to the list as well. As ever, you'll be able to challenge your friends friends in local multiplayer, but there will also be online play available through Switch Online. I had to Google what Chambara is. I think that's like sword. you hit each other with foam bats, yeah. Yeah, it's a sword stuff. So, I've been wanting a new addition to the Wii Sports franchise. Yes. <laughs> this looks like a knockoff. It does. I, like, I'm when not I saw into this, it. I'm like, part of the thing that made it recognizably Wii Sports was the Miis. Yeah, what did they, they do? They don't are in Miis. What did they do to the Miis? And even like when uh, 
Koizumi and the other guys uh, play. Like, they just put the me head on, like, this body. And it looks weird. <laughs> well, that looked better than this. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'm yeah. I'm scared. I'm, like, weirded out. I hope, I mean, yeah, I I guess we'll be able to put our little, like, uh, Nintendo Switch. Is it even called a me? Like, my Nintendo Switch guy, yeah. the Bob. Is that called a me? Yeah, that's a me. Dude. All right, good. I want that. Is on the Switch. <laughs> I want that. They I want my guy these. in here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I I just put my me from the Wii and 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 uh and uh just gave a beard to it. Yeah. Um but anyway, hopefully that'll make when when more people start adding their characters, hopefully we get more me's thrown in there. That was like one of the best parts of the game was that you're you're in the game. <laughs> So, like, you know, people come over and they want to play. Everybody is down to play Wii Sports because it's super easy to, like, understand what you need to do. And then you make a me for the person that you're playing with. And that was, like, such a cool thing. Like, hey, come over. Hey, your me's already on my Wii. It's already on this Wii mode. Yeah. Here. You can go play it. Like, we had ones for our parents. Our parents didn't play games. Yeah. So, like, that was awesome. Uh, So, that's, <laughs> I'm, like, weirded out by how this looks. Um, Yeah. But I'm excited that there's know. a new Wii Sports. I'm not excited that it's forty dollars. It should be free. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's gonna be forty dollars, it's gonna need a lot more features than just, you know, because right now this looks like what we got on the Wii, you know, many years ago. But a little worse. <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't have True. the same charm. Like, like True. yeah, it's upres. Uh, another thing is that I heard that uh, there's no golf yet and no soccer yet uh those are coming no. later golf and soccer are gonna be yeah the free free uh dlc so i'd imagine the soccer is because we're getting uh strikers and they just want to hold off until that launches probably yeah because this comes out april 29th that's very soon yeah and that's probably also why the soccer is like big soccer it's not like real soccer yeah where is boxing asks the chat Maybe that'll be a, a later edition. Uh, I never played uh, Wii Sports Resort. I played it at a at a GameStop kiosk, <laughs> and it is, like the the Wii the Wii Motion Plus like does like enhance it a little bit, mm -hmm. but like that bow and arrow shit, man. Like you kept having to recalibrate the Wii Remote to do that properly, and that was not fun. Right. Uh. Next up, another big time announcement, Taiko no Tatsujin. Yes. Uh, well, hot damn, it's a new Taiko no, <laughs> no Tatsujin game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Rhythm Festival arrives at some point later this year, offering a generous 70, 76 tracks in total, including a brand new practice mode for those who want to get in on the swing of things before heading to the stage. Elsewhere, there's new four-player mode in Rhythm Festival, which is sure to generate carnage, and there's also a brand new 1v1 competitive mode called, called Great Drum Toy War. Finally, there's an actually an in-game subscription service offering 500 songs. Whoa. Yeah. That's how they should do it for rhythm games. Yeah. <laughs> a subscription service. Or, or, or you know, just like, like an iTunes type thing in the game. Yeah. Uh, I've Oh, I've wanted to get into Taiko no Tatsujin, but uh, I'm I'm very bad. <laughs> yeah, I have that cool keyboard controller thing that's specifically for rhythm games. Yeah, and I played this. I played the old Taiko no Tatsujin with it. And it was pretty cool, but it's very. It's like a it's like a mind fuck that game. I couldn't. But I isn't couldn't do it? Isn't this uh, Taiko no Tatsujin? Isn't that like the whole gimmick of it is you play with like a Taiko drum controller? Yeah, I wanted to get that. So when that came out, the the big Hori yeah. made a big drum controller thing, and I and they were I had a correspondence with Hori, and I said, "Yo, I want that." And they said, "Sorry, yeah. Japan only." And I, it, it was I didn't want it enough to spend like two hundred dollars and buy it on Play yeah. Asia to have this giant thing. I would have, but by then it was too late. It, you know, it wouldn't have been a good video anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Maybe I'll try it in an arcade. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, we got triangle strategy. Do we need to talk oh, hey. about triangle strategy? Uh, 
Is there anything new? Oh, they said that there's going to be a new demo that goes all the way up to the end of chapter three. Whoa. And your progress from that demo will carry over to the main game. That's probably like 30 hours right there. Yeah. Uh, so they had a demo previously, but wasn't that like a like a feedback demo like they like they just wanted so. people to like tell them how the game was yeah uh so this is probably just like a, hey this is what the game will be like yeah oh and the demo's out later today yeah that's pretty pog uh next cuphead more cuphead i yes. i i always hear about this cuphead <laughs> uh this new paid for dlc will be dropping june 30th it will feature a new playable character in the form of miss chalice and is the final chapter of the game. I've been hearing about this for like a year. I know. Well, now right. it's finally coming. Well, I, does it say December? It was oh, announced back in December. December. Yeah. So June 30th. So we still got yeah. a decent amount of time. Yeah. We This is this freaking director's packed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Metroid Dread Free Update. This was kind of crazy. They're, yes. they're, they're all, there's a mode now. Where There's two uh, modes now. One hit death. You get hit Dread one time death. at all for any reason, and you're dead. Yes, that is Dread mode. And then there is also Rookie mode, which lets Samus live, uh, you know, increase her, it increases her health, and she regenerates health faster. So you get both ends of the spectrum. Yes. Uh, if you're cracked at the game, you have a new mode to try out. If you're yeah. very bad, you have a little hand-holdy mode. Yes. Uh, I don't think I want to play the Dread. No. <laughs> I don't no. think I want to do that to myself. No, absolutely not. I'm sure there's people who are already doing no-hit runs, so uh, yes. that'll be exciting for them. I'm, I'm shocked that N Nintendo is doing something for like the tryhards. I'm surprised well, not that only they're that. doing something for people who like are really diehard into the game. Not only that, but there's going to be a second update in the future that will include a boss rush mode. That's cool. That I might try. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, so that'll be out in April. Uh, Dread mode and rookie mode are available today. That's. I think this is awesome. I hope Nintendo thinks about this uh, when they release other uh, uh, yes. games. Uh, next up. Now, is this the biggest announcement of the, of the whole thing to you? No, the next one is, but this is a pretty big announcement. Okay. Like I when they they announced it, I actually said, "Well, it's about time." I said, "Uh, whoa." Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings. Nintendo is bringing both games uh to the to the Switch online today. If you've ever played uh NES and Smash Brothers and wanted to learn what his whole deal is, this is your chance. Uh, so Earthbound, of course, the cult classic Super Nintendo game that uh, everyone loves but barely anybody has played, uh, is now finally available on Switch after years of not being available for some stupid reason. And not only that, they're also bringing Earthbound Beginnings, uh, also known as Mother in Japan. This is the first game in the series that didn't come to North America until it was released on the Wii U like a couple of years ago. So this is a very big deal. Yo, yes. Earthbound, very pretty game. Oh, Earthbound yeah. Earthbound Beginnings. It's a game. <laughs> there it is. You, you know, for, for an NES game, it's not terrible. No, for an NES game, it's good. But, you know, yeah, you look at Earthbound, Earthbound yeah. regular old Earthbound, and it looks sick. That game looks sick. I, I completely will understand say, why it's got such a big cult following from people who have never played it. There is, there was a part of me after they announced this that was like, they're bringing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Will they put Mother 3? I thought, Switch? I thought that nah. was next. I was yeah. like, I was like, here it comes. And then they didn't. Yeah. So, which, you know what? Whatever Nintendo wants to do with that game, fine. I'm not really that invested in it, but this would have been the perfect opportunity. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a huge deal. I think that, what did I say was the biggest deal? S Wii Sports. Mario, Sp S S uh, Nintendo Switch Sports. Yes. I think that's the biggest deal. I think Earthbound, I think Earthbound's the biggest deal in, in for, for everybody. Like, in terms of Nintendo fandom, I think Earthbound and Earthbound 
beginnings is the biggest yeah. deal. For me, I think Nintendo uh, Switch Sports and Earthbound are the biggest deal. Not that I'm going to play Earthbound. I just think it's a I huge might. deal that Nintendo did it. I might actually finally give it a shot because now I have something to play it on. True. You know, and I can just pick it up and play whenever I get the chance to. You can just see what all the hubbub is about. Yeah. I'm probably going to hate it because at its core, <laughs> it is a JRPG. So. Right. Um, we'll and see. I'd imagine it's super weird. Oh, yeah. Um, and also, I mean, the Mario Strikers thing is pretty is a pretty big deal, too. Yeah. But you think... I think this is the biggest deal. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pack. So, instead of Mario Kart 9, which everybody thought we were getting, instead, we're getting Mario Kart 8 DLC. Mario Kart 8 is getting 48 new tracks, doubling the size of its total selection. The catch, however, is that they'll be releasing it in six batches between now and 2023, the first of which is coming in March. You'll also have to pay for the content. It'll be $24.99, or it will be available for free with your Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack membership. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That, that more they're, They need to add more value to that expansion pass. Yeah. So no, I guess I think- having their first-party DLC come with the expansion pass is pretty awesome. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. And I think this is a great idea because everybody already owns Mario Kart 8. Right. So rather than, you know, try to fart out a sequel, just add to the game everybody already owns. Yeah, and the game's already polished to all hell. Yeah. You know, like it was already polished to all hell on the Wii U. And then they yeah. farted it over to the Switch and, you know, it's still great. So, yeah, and everybody already owns it. it but everybody was saying they were going to make a Mario Kart 9. And I thought that was, I mean, yeah, of course, they're working on a Mario Kart 9. But yeah. releasing this year, I think, is insane to think about because yeah. uh, Mario Kart 8 is still in the top 10 yeah. uh, every single month across all platforms. Highest selling game still. The game's like fucking eight years old. Yeah. So, uh, of course, they're not going to release another Mario Kart game. It makes perfect sense for them to release something like this. I think this is awesome. Yeah. 48 courses is like a huge deal. 48 new courses, you know, yeah. based on uh, Mario Kart games from the past and whatnot. But still, 48 courses on top of, what is it, 48 courses in the game already? Mm-hmm. That's insane. So, yeah, pe- people like all those industry insiders who were talking about today's the day we're going to get Mario Kart 9. Mario Kart 9. And that, they're going to say, it's the same thing. It's not yeah. the same thing. <laughs> Mario Kart 9 is Mario Kart 9. It's not a Mario Kart 8 DLC. It's a different yeah. game. Because then also that leak was talking about how Mario Kart 9 has a twist. Was the twist that it's just DLC for Mario Kart 8? <laughs> But no, that's a big deal. I mean, I'm yeah. going to get it because I just have the expansion pass and I have yeah. Mario Kart, but uh, yeah. I don't, I mean, maybe I'll play it once. Play it with subs. I don't know. Well, uh, I feel like because we're not getting all 48 tracks at once. They said it's going to come out in six waves. And I feel oh, okay. like, yeah, it's six waves between now and the end of 2023. And I feel like I only ever play Mario Kart when I'm with my friends. Right. So. I feel like I'm going to be, I'm probably going to see my friends six times total between now and 2023. So perfect. Every time I see my friends, I'll get to play the new tracks and then <laughs> not have to worry about it again. Uh, J buggy in the chat says, what if the eight in the title of Mario Kart eight is actually an infinity symbol? Yo, I'm so down dude. for, for popular games to just be forever. Like like yeah. Mario Kart is like pretty much perfect. Just keep updating it. I'm cool. But they're not yeah. gonna. They'll make a nine eventually. Well, they'll probably make a nine for whatever their next system is. That's the way they they work, you know? Like Smash Brothers Ultimate, like just call it quits. <laughs> just add more characters on the next system. I know, like how, what can you do? Like you really can't go any bigger in the next Smash Brothers game. Smash right. Brothers, like I can see they're fucked. <laughs> yeah no game the next smash brothers game cannot live up to ultimate 
Yeah. I could at least see like a Mario Kart 9. Like that at least makes sense to me. Right. People, Smash Brothers Next does not. People are saying that the way they do a 9 for Mario Kart 9 is to uh, make it like Smash Brothers and include all, not just Mario characters, but all different types of, of right. characters from, from different Nintendo franchises. Like make it like yeah. Melee or, or, or yeah, like, me- like Melee. Yeah. Or I guess Brawl. Well, I- they're pushing that with eight because they got Link. They have the Inklings. Right. I think there's another. There's uh, there. Animal Crossing. Yeah. And in uh, the arcade version, they have Pac-Man. Yes. So, so it, that's possible. But then uh, will it still be called Mario Kart? That's, that's we don't know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, this was kind of a big deal. Yeah, I, I will say. Mm-hmm. Uh, next is Xenoblade Chronicles three, and and you this was this saw... was the last thing, right? Yes, this is like yes. the, so when the, I saw the this when was I the saw one the trailer, more thing. Yeah, go, and I was go, looking go. at it, and before the title came up, I'm like, this looks like a Xenoblade game, and it was. Yeah, I wasn't sure because it was the opening was weird. Yeah, uh, but I think the uh the the weapons with like the the neon lights in them tipped me off. It looks like Shulk Sword, yeah. It took until that for me to understand that it was Xenoblade. Uh, yeah. But so I was watching this, uh, this, this direct, and I was thinking to myself, if there's anything that's like super relevant to me, then I'm gonna have to make a video. I'm gonna have to drop everything that I'm doing and make a video and, and get it out before the podcast somehow. Mm-hmm. And I was very stressed out about that. And when they were getting ready to do the one more thing, I was like, oh, no, God, please don't make it like a Mario game because I'm going to have to make a video yeah. or something. So they uh, they dropped this. And then the second I saw some weeb shit, I was like, oh, I'm good. Oh, my God. We're good. We're done. It's one of these things. <laughs> yeah. So Xenoblade Chronicles 3, new game. Here it is. Wow. Yes. Good on you. Are you gonna read a thing? Uh, yeah, let me I, let me pull it back up. Uh, the reveal trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles Three is characteristically melancholy and filled with oversized swords, cat girls, and giant titans. The third main game in the series stars Noah and Mio, two youths who are caught up in a war between the nations of Kieves and Agnes. Uh, much like the rest <laughs> of the game's core cast of six, the main theme of Xenoblade Chronicles Three uh, was simply described as life. And Nintendo's <laughs> Shinya Takahashi uh, sees that the sequel will tie together the futures of the worlds depicted in the first two games, not Xenoblade Chronicles X, for the record, uh, when it arrives this September, which could explain some of the vaguely familiar and practically obscured characters in the trailer. Developer Monolith Soft is known for dense, story-rich, and dramatic JRPGs, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 certainly looks the part at first blush. When they're running around, this looks like a friggin' PS2 game. <laughs> like, like the cutscenes look good, but then that looks like a PS2 game. Yeah. That's uh, I mean the the environments are grand, but you know they used to do that stuff on PS2. Yeah. Very very strange. Um. That's cool. I mean, the Xenoblade games are like a hundred hours long, so no thanks. Yeah. But I do like the yeah. I do like the general vibe. It looks very pretty. Yeah, no, even though I just look, said it looks like a PS2 gorgeous. game. I mean, the friggin' like car- the the art design and stuff looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, for a split second, when once the guy stopped playing the flute, I was like, Genshin Impact. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, Oh no, Xenoblade it makes more sense. Uh. So yeah, that was it. Uh, I mean, there's uh, a lot. Well, th- real quick, because they were left out. There was like that, a quick rapid fire. Oh, okay. Uh, thing that they had, and they they left that out in the, in the games radar article. So real quick, zombie zombie army four, is coming to the switch. Uh, Getsu Fuma Den Undying Moon is coming. Uh, that Demon Slayer game is coming. Lego Brawls and Two Points Campus. That gets to also Fuma Den. Uh, I want to try that. That looks yeah. really cool. Uh, Two Points Campus is like apparently a very popular game. Wasn't there some controversy with them? Was there? I don't know. Is that why I know of it? Did, oh, they probably did an NFT. <laughs> probably. That's probably yeah. the controversy. 
upcoming. Like, listen, yeah, that's a controversy, but it's not that. Listen, in the grand scheme of things in the video game industry, making an NFT is not the biggest controversy you can get yourself into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lego Brawls looked very good, though. I saw, like, the trailer for that, like, the quick snippet of gameplay for that, it looks pretty good. It's basically a, a beat-em-up, but everything's made out of Lego. What's it called? Lego Lego Brawls. I don't remember. I think I checked out there on the quick snippet uh, thing. I I wouldn't blame you. Oh, this is on Apple Arcade in 2019. Oh, I remember this game. This does look oh, pretty cool. It's not on Apple Arcade. I'll just try it on my phone. I have a free subscription. I mean, it was back in 2019. I don't know if it still right. is. Uh, cool. So overall, that was a solid direct. There's a lot yes. for, uh, the JRPG fans and stuff. Um, yes. But for me, there was a lot. I was like, whoa, they're doing that. Like, like Nintendo Switch Sports. I'm, I'm, very, I'm shocked that Nintendo threw any bones to fans. <laughs> like people have been wanting a Nintendo Switch Sports game for a really long time. Yeah. And same thing with Mario Strikers. People have been wanting a new Strikers game. I'm shocked mm -hmm. Nintendo listened. Earthbound, yeah. another thing. I'm shocked Nintendo listened. It's it's like it's as if uh people our age are finally starting to uh rise the ranks of Nintendo <laughs> and they have uh the the elders listening finally. Yeah. Um so and then of course we will get Mother Three. <laughs> that's it I think that it's entirely possible. Yeah. Also, Klonoa, I want to try that. That's, yeah, I'm excited for Klonoa. I'm excited for Portal. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, I'm excited for Portal, not because I'm going to play it, but I want other people to experience yeah. that game. The more people who can experience it, the better. Yeah, um, I think it's I think it's cool that we're getting No Man's Sky. Um, what else is there? Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings. I mean, it's about time. Those should have been on Switch Online from the beginning. The Metroid uh, DLC the Metroid is, update, is, is yeah. another weird, like, non-Nintendo type of thing to do. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, there's... A, there's and Kirby, we already knew we were getting that. Yeah. Um. So again, there's a lot here that uh, surprised me. Like I didn't think a lot of this stuff I didn't think would come out of Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad that they did. And th this feels like this feels like a fan made this direct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, it's definitely. I mean, like I said, there's nothing that really like jumped out and like grabbed me and made me like lose my mind but there were a lot of announcements that i thought were really cool and there are things i'm excited for so this was overall a very good direct i kind of lost my mind a little bit on the nintendo switch sports when i saw the logo i was like wow and then i, when I saw what it looked like i was like oh no <laughs> um otherwise yeah like i said i was gonna make a video if there's anything that like really blew me away um and nothing really did. But I think that this was still like a solid like A tier direct. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think this was a good time for everybody. What did you people think in the chat, though? Yes, let us know. Uh, or don't. Your life. Or don't. We don't really care. Underscore, thank you for the 50 whole months. I'm surprised that there are that many. MK, 8.5, let's go. Rick MSGT, thank you for the 13 months. Best direct of the last like two years. Strikers, Xenoblade 3, Advanced Wars, Fire Emblem, Warriors. Uh, I actually liked the one that had the Nintendo 64 games announced. Yes. I thought that was solid. Um, G Garcia, thank you for the 1400 bits. He says hello. 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 Uh, Joe Sense, thank you for the 16 months. 16 months. Wow. Bob and Will, thanks for the good content. Thank you for watching. And it's important for 16 months. Yeah. Snooze attacks. Thanks for the 100 bits. Eric Henley. Thanks for the 48 months. Slacking behind, Eric. <laughs> Four years, baby. Here's to many more. Oh, my God. Thanks, Eric, for saying Thank a cute you. thing after I just shit all over you. <laughs> Lewin Mag. Thanks for the 100 bits. Ultra hyped for Mario Strikers, the real FIFA killer. It, like, really <laughs> is, though. It could be. FIFA, they've been releasing garbage. They need a, a contender. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, if they would have released a Mario Strikers, if they would have released it earlier, or if they would have released it on the Wii U, not that anyone would have played it on the Wii U, but I feel like it could be the FIFA killer. They, they uh, put they put more attention in the franchise. They really do not care to compete with FIFA. No, 
No. They could, but they're like, we're going to do our own thing. We'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, in the grand term of, like, racing games, Mario Kart doesn't compete with, like, Forza or Gran Turismo. Right. But you look at the you look at the grand scheme of things, Mario Kart is clearly the Gran Turismo killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grubin, thank you for the three months. I appreciate it. Uh, Flo in the chat says, I know you disagree, but no Mario plus Rabbids date was disappointing. We're going to get another direct. Uh, I guess, you know what? Probably not until freaking E3 time, not until June. Uh, yeah. June or July. I always forget. They both start with J's. But uh, one, I think we're going to get a whole bunch of the stuff we've been looking for. Namely, I know a lot of people are disappointed we didn't get... Uh, a name for the Breath of the Wild uh, sequel. Yeah. Uh, or Link's face. I want to see Link's face. Yeah. Um, but that'll, well, that's probably saved for E3. The first reveal we saw Link's face. We saw Link and Zelda standing no. next to each other. Yes, not, the, the very yeah, first one. But not after he gets the arm. Not in the most recent one we saw. No, no, no. no. You, don't, you see Link's face pre-arm. You don't see what happens after he gets the arm. You never see his face. When he's got the long hair and the arm, they don't show his face for whatever reason. Right. In the What I'm saying is in the very first reveal. You see his face, but it's pre-arm is what I'm saying. Yeah, they don't get that. That uh, doesn't count. So we, we know, but we know Link is in the game in some capacity. Right. We just don't know what happens post-arm. Yes. And that's what I want. Yeah. And we'll probably see that probably around E3 time. Mm-hmm. Uh, LJWVU with the six months excellent direct and excellent Wolf Den content happy seven months thank you very much uh, very important post arm details yes yes is there Bob post arm yes you're looking at him actually you yes you want to see my giant arm scar look at that. there you go I, I got into a fight with an ice cream truck <laughs> it's funny when I was five years true. old I was there for that I can <laughs> confirm <laughs> I tossed myself through a window to get to the ice cream man. <laughs> none of that, and to be clear, none of that is a lie. <laughs> I was five years old, and the ice cream truck was outside, and we went, ice cream! And I, like Garfield, chucked myself through the window. <laughs> and I'm just here to confirm that none of that is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this Oh, this picture of Garfield. That's me. <laughs> And then the ice cream man saw me bleeding everywhere and ran out and and called yeah. the call, he was like an EMT and he called he wrapped me up and called an ambulance and everything. And I got a hundred plus stitches and almost lost my arm. It was great. Yeah. Good time. Anyway. Uh what what the hell were we talking about? Oh. <laughs> uh we were moving on, is what we were doing. Yes. It's more Nintendo news. Uh and it's Switch sales. The Nintendo Switch has now surpassed the Wii, making it Nintendo's best-selling console. Uh, yes. So, S- wait, uh, overall, like, in total Wii sales? Yeah. Like, year to date? Yes. Whoa. That's crazy. Uh, sales of the Switch rose to the second highest level ever, despite scarcity due to production and production delays and distribution delays since black friday stated nintendo for the switch to do as well as it has hampered by the shortages and supply chain issues is impressive in newly released sales figures uh the nintendo switch has sold 103.54 million units worldwide as of december 31st 2021 this number surpasses the nintendo wii's life to date number of 101.63 million units. That is crazy. In to put this in context, the NES or the Famicom sold 61.91 million while the Super Famicom or Super NES sold 49.10 million units. So so I always, I mean, since the Switch launched and it didn't say numbers, I was mm-hmm. like this is going to this is going to be up there with the Wii. The only thing that I had reservations about. Uh, there were two. Re- there were two reasons I had reservations about the sales of the Switch. 
uh, at least in comparison to the Wii. The Wii was such a casual device that it was everywhere. People who didn't yeah. play games had it. Old folks' homes had it. You go to like your aunt's house and they just had one. People loved the balance board for like fitness and stuff. It had like yeah. a like a it was more health conscious than the Switch was. Which is why I thought it was such a miss when they didn't pack in one two switch with it. Or at least yeah. like a sports contender, because that could have put it in into in, more into the mainstream than it already was. Yeah. Um, but the thing that definitely helped the Nintendo Switch sales was that it's a portable console, and yes. if you got kids, you're gonna need one for each of them. Yeah. Uh, or if you're a YouTuber like Bob, you just buy one of every version six. that comes out. <laughs> you need six of them. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, now we should note that Nintendo has sold a hundred. 118.69 million units of the Game Boy. So it's possible that the Switch... So the Switch has not surpassed the sales of the Game Boy or the original DS. So the, the, ori the original Game Boy sold 118.69 million units, and the original DS sold 154.02 million units. So in terms of Nintendo consoles... Uh, yes. The Nintendo Switch is the highest selling Nintendo home console, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a portable, so it's kind of cheating. Yeah. Um, it is the number three highest selling uh, uh, portable console in in total of all portable consoles, unless you yeah. include an iPhone. I bet you an iPhone probably beat it. Um, probably. Uh in in total of of consoles in total all all consoles uh it is number 5 currently according to this wikipedia list uh so nintendo switch is number 5 playstation 4 is number 4 which i'm a little bit surprised about um game boy and game boy color is packed together uh as number 3 the ds family <laughs> is number so that's 2 like that's the DS, the DS Lite, and the DSi, and the DS XL. Sexel. That's what they yes. mean by the fam. Yeah. Yes. Uh, not the 3DS. Um, yeah. And then number one is PlayStation 2. Yeah. Now, I can see the Switch getting up to Game Boy. I can't see it yeah. getting much higher than that for yeah. a while. Unless, unless they... Decide not to make a second one in the next two years. <laughs> well, I think regardless, you know, if you think about like just six years ago or so, everybody thought Nintendo was done yeah. because the Wii U was such a colossal failure. Yep. And yet here they are, the fifth best selling video game yeah. console of all time. <laughs> it, if Nintendo. To the point where, like. Sorry, go ahead. If Nintendo makes a Pro, a Switch Pro which I don't think they will. But if they did, then I could see it getting up to DS numbers. But uh, if they make a second one, then it, it categorizes as a yeah. different console. Then, then uh, no, I don't see that happening. Anyway. And you got to remember, like they're, they're hitting this number with very old hardware. Like this is like an old Android phone. Yeah. Like hitting these sales numbers, playing high quality HD games. Like, we're getting No Man's Sky, a PS4 game, on the Switch. And it's not the cloud version. I'm that's looking to see... That's incredible. Is the Ein Odin more powerful than a Switch? Because <laughs> that, that's like an Android phone. It's got like a Snapdragon yeah. processor in it. Because uh, the Tegra chip's pretty pretty powerful in terms of like, uh, you know, like portable like tablets. Yeah. But it's it's oh, it's yeah. over five. I mean, the Switch is is about five years old now. That Tegra is older than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know uh, what the I'm trying. I wish I could see, find like a benchmark of the of the Odin versus the Switch. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, uh, but they're pretty comparable. Anyway, uh, so yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised the Nintendo Switch is selling so much. I'm a little surprised uh, it's beating the Wii in year-to-date sales in total because the Wii came out in 2006. <laughs> well, it came out in 2006, and then when did they stop production on it? I don't know. 
because you know over the grand scheme of things once they stop making wii's you know it's not like they're still making wii's now true but that's the, that was the entire life like the switch still has life left yeah yeah sheepish lord of chaos thank you for the three months y'all wolf boys are dope keep up the good work thanks bro i appreciate thank it you. uh next news more nintendo yes uh f- nintendo president says it won't join the games industry acquisition arms race this is nintendo a great president- picture of the nintendo headquarters <laughs> Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa has reiterated that the company plans to grow its game development capabilities organically rather than through acquisitions. With the industry going through a period of consolidation, Furukawa touched on the topic of acquisitions on Thursday following the publication of Nintendo's latest fiscal results. Our brand was built upon products crafted with dedication by our employees and having a large number of people who don't possess Nintendo DNA in our group would not be a plus to the company, he said. Um, This is via Bloomberg. Furukawa's comments echo those made in November when he said the company was primarily focused on organic growth in order to continue Nintendo's creative culture, but that he was not not dismissing the possibility of acquiring other game companies. Uh, However, the marketplace has shifted in a major way since uh, recently, with 2022 kicking off with a record number of acquisitions. Uh, Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two, acquired Zanga, for $12.7 billion. And then Microsoft, of course, bought Activision Blizzard for $69 billion. And on Monday, Sony uh, Sony acquired uh, Bungie for $3.6 billion. So uh, Nintendo had a financial results briefing, I think, uh, yes. a couple days ago. And uh, usually when they do that, we like drop everything and do a whole podcast on it. Like there's usually yeah. like a lot of stuff. Like... There's usually a Q&A section where investors or or their top shareholders ask the heads of Nintendo questions that, you know, we usually get a little bit of insight of the, yeah. of the inner workings of Nintendo. Um, but in this case, we had a Nintendo Direct, which told us a lot more than a uh, financial results briefing ever yes. could. Uh, but yes, this is interesting that uh, Nintendo... I mean, we kind of knew this. We kind of knew Nintendo was straight up just not interested yeah. in acquiring other companies. They also probably don't have the money. Well, last year, the Nintendo acquired Luigi Mansion 3 developer Next Level Games, but that was the company's first buyout in more than a decade. Mm-hmm. So that's really what you know Furukawa was talking about. He's not dismissing the idea of acquiring other companies, but they have to be companies that fit into the overall... Uh, nintendo brand the overall nintendo style of making games and next level games has made games for nintendo before nintendo just officially put a ring on it so to speak they don't even own game freak or the pokemon company they own part of i don't even think they own hal laboratory (laughs) they just have Kirby and smash brothers and a lot of games for them they just have a really good relationship that seems to just be their thing is is like Instead of just buying up these guys, they're like, we don't need to buy them up. We just need to treat them really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's their that's their move. So, and it's it's working. So, whatever. Yeah. They don't they don't need to do a Microsoft. Microsoft kind of needs to buy people. Yeah. They, they kind of need. They got the money, and they're like, we need people to work with us. Come here, and they just yeah, hostily take over all the companies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool at first. You're like, oh, you buy Obsidian, you buy Ninja Theory, you buy Double Fine. Oh, that's cool. Finally, you have game studios to make games for you. And then they buy Activ- and then they buy Bethesda, and you're like, okay, that's a big deal. And then they buy Activision. They're like, wait a minute, man. Yeah, wait a minute. This is getting kind of crazy now, dude. <laughs> just want to think about man. this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, more Nintendo. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, talking uh, point. Nintendo's mastery of f- physical game sales hides limited digital growth. What the hell does that mean? So this is basic. This is more of an opinion piece okay. than anything. But I wanted to find the specific. I should have done this beforehand. Are they saying basic, that uh, digital sales are not as big as we thought? Correct. Interesting, because I I think that they'd be higher because it's the switch and and you yeah. people would want digital to have it more portably. Uh, when you dil- drill down into the financial results, you can find positives and negatives depending on your mood, as between highlighted, blah, blah, blah. 
2020 in particular was a unique in terms of recent history. Uh, when reading through Nintendo's briefings and notes, the trends are all too uh, familiar. Nintendo's big strengths, uh, as it's been over the past few decades, is in producing and selling physical entertainment goods. This isn't just in terms of numbers, but in the gaming culture it's cultivated. You only need to see the sheer volume and variety of physical edition games and the limited edition industry for Switch titles to appreciate how significant number of Nintendo fans value and prize physical media and collectibles. It's a strength that Sony and especially Microsoft has struggled to match in terms of big hitters in the console gaming. If Nintendo rules the physical media space, though, it is still arguably lagging behind in the digital sphere. That leapt out in the in the financial results around more around other more positive angles. Nintendo's digital business, which incorporates everything from eShop games, Switch Online subscriptions, microtransactions, and more, is behind its rivals. Now to give the results their due, their due, overall revenue from digital sales were up in Q3 in line with huge figures and momentum being generated by physical copies. I guess that's a testament to like Nintendo fans, or at least the ones with money. I yeah. guess they just like uh, like collecting stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, maybe like... If you're a kid, it's easier to get given a gift of a physical game. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo digital sales and strategies aren't delivering consistent growth, even as a huge Pokemon feud fueled Q3 couldn't drag the fiscal year of digital sales past 2020's figures. The percentage of revenue that digital sales contribute is also rather flat. Uh, the red line in the picture shows this and was down 35.3% in the last quarter. Yes, there was a COVID-driven spike in 20 and 21, but Nintendo has also struggled to capitalize and take its online offerings and revenue forward. For comparison, Sony's business is in, Sony's business in this sphere has some key advantages over Nintendo. For one thing, more revenue is generated from add-ons and microtransactions than games, and an extraordinary indication of the power of the likes of season passes and FIFA ultimate team. We're at areas where the switch largely, largely misses out digital side of the market accounts for 62% of Sony's game sale revenue. I'd be interested to see how much of this digital sales is Nintendo switch online. Cause that's probably going to be a, a mm -hmm. big factor, but yeah, that makes sense. There's more DLC and more add-ons and stuff on PlayStation and stuff. And, and right. I mean, I mean more, I feel like, People who own PlayStation and Xbox consoles, they're more uh, they're more trained to be okay with digital purchases, right? Um, but like you you said, it's the Switch. It's so much more convenient to have your games on the Switch already mm -hmm. rather than just swapping them out. And we live in a world now where like everything's digital. You know, the iPhone and Android phones have trained us to just download the apps to the phone. Right. You know, so you would think. You know, maybe the Switch wouldn't have as big of a numbers as uh, Xbox and PlayStation, but they should still be like pretty high up there. Yeah. The fact that they're that they're not hitting those numbers the same in the same way, and it's not matching physical releases at all. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I so I think that uh, they had crazy numbers during COVID because nobody wanted to go out and everybody was downloading right. freaking uh, uh, Animal Crossing, mm -hmm. and that probably makes it look bad now. Because uh, things are getting more back to normal. <laughs> yeah. So it probably looks worse than it actually is. It's probably just that they did so good, like, you know, peak COVID, and now things are, yeah. you know, kind of evening out. Um, But anyway, that's that's pretty interesting. Oh. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's not bad news. It's just it's interesting news. Right. What that is. Uh, we can fire through some of this other stuff. Uh, we got some other news. Yeah, kind of some throwaway stuff. Like, for example, Stadia. What's happening? Uh, Google Stadia has reportedly been demoted. But it <laughs> might show up on your Peloton bike. Ugh. Uh, one year after Google revealed, uh, it's revealed it's now Google Stadia cloud gaming idea. Uh, boy, this is a weirdly word. One year after Google revealed it now saw Google Stadia cloud gaming idea as a mere technology platform for industry partners rather than a true rival uh, to Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft. Business Insider is reporting that some Stadia gamers' fears have come true. 
The entire Stadia project has been demoted within Google and its new proprietary, its new priority is to power experiences from companies including Peloton, Bungie, and Capcom rather than attracting more games to Stadia itself. In fact, Peloton bike owners might have already experienced the fruits of this labor. Business Insider is reporting that Peloton's very first video game, Lane Break, was actually powered by Google's cloud gaming technology, now called Google Stream. I think that's cool. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Just sell off the technology you have because uh, these other companies desperately need cloud gaming technology. No, you're, you're right. And I think it's not a bad idea that they're sharing this technology with other companies. Right. What's interesting to note, though, at the whole point of this article is that Google Stadia, as we know it, like a cloud streaming service, like a, a Game Pass competitor, doesn't seem to exist anymore. <laughs> it's not... Like Google came out last year with like all the, you know, fire and vin and vim and vinegar. It's like to promote this is the new way to game, and it has not met expectations. And it, like they are refocusing it and basically doing away with the service. I stand by that Google Stadia was good. It had horrible marketing. Yeah. They, 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 the, their biggest problem was that they said it was 4K60 and uh, nothing supported that. So why did they even say that? Well, there was that. It was, there was, like, I'm still confused by this. The fact that you needed a paid Google Stadia subscription in order to use Stadia, but you had to buy the games individually. That was another big In miss. addition to that, like, people thought it was just a, you know, like a Netflix type deal. Well, and okay, you... so so it the the plan was that it would be free, and mm -hmm. then you pay for the game, but they released it as a pro version that you needed a subscription for. That was another yes. huge miss. If they released it with the free version, and then you just buy the games that you want, that would have been awesome. Because then, yeah. like, you want to play Cyberpunk. I don't have a computer that could play cyberpunk i don't have a freaking xbox that could play cyberpunk but i have this freaking uh shitty laptop yeah boom you you pay 60 bucks you can play cyberpunk that's like huge uh but they 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 messed all that up the technology was great uh yeah. everything around it they they fucked up uh google spokesperson patrick sable provided a statement we announced our intentions of helping publishers and partners deliver games directly to gamers last year, and I've been working towards that. First manifestation has been our partnership with AT&T, who is offering Batman Arkham Knight available to their customers for free. Uh, while we won't be commenting on any rumors or speculations regarding other industry partners, we, will fo we are still focusing on bringing great games to Stadia in 2022. With 200 plus titles currently available, we expect to have another 100 games added to the platform this year and are currently have 50 games available uh, to claim in Stadia Pro. So they're They'll, basically uh, like remain calm all as well. Yeah, I doubt that. I think that yeah. uh, it'll be, uh, they're phasing it out. I yeah. Again, I think, I think uh, PlayStation needs some help. I think Nintendo needs some help. Probably well, like Square and uh, and companies who put uh, cloud gaming services on the Switch. I think they could really benefit from whatever Stadia has. Well, Sony, remember like this was last year or like two years ago, Sony actually partnered with Microsoft right. to power their cloud gaming infrastructure. Right. They're using Microsoft Azure to do that. Nintendo's going to do a Nintendo thing. You know, they're never going to partner with silicon valley tech company to do this sure <laughs> but yeah so it looks like google stadia is not gonna be it's not gonna be a game streaming service for the customers for much longer it looks like it's gonna be cloud streaming service for game companies to right. stream their games uh i want to point out this chat message because i think it's funny not going to New York fashion says highly recommend an SD card. Super easy to get going. I don't, I didn't even need to Google anything. I think that that has like big, uh, the same energy as, as like, uh, shorts are great. They're fun and easy to wear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, we can move on. Yes. Uh, 
This I want to I want to bring on a guest. E, ah. come here. Oh. Uh, I didn't know I was part of this. You are now. Hold on, let me turn. You are on. now. Here you are. Uh, this is. Oh, I know about this. Legendary Guitar Hero player exposed as a cheater. Yeah, it was. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, oh God. What, what was we'll just read the article. Shmooey. Read part of the article. Will. Shmooey, Yeah. All right. All right. You this might hear an echo, guys. I'm sorry, but whatever. Right. Uh, competitive guitar hero and clone hero player Shmooey is the latest such example of. Uh, you know, somebody cheating to prove that they're the best. As fans of the series uh, recently exposed his most impressive feat as fraudulent, the player had spent the last few years sharing incredible videos of his accomplishments, setting new records and earning thousands of dollars in bounties that have been established for certain songs. In a video breakdown of Shmooey's history with the game, speedrunning commentator slash YouTuber Carl Jobst uh, revealed in detail how Shmooey managed to fool players for so long. Uh, let me just skip ahead. Shmooey well, has long you been a part of the scene. As Kotaku points out, he's clearly a very talented player, which is likely why it took so long for his fake videos to be exposed. Things started to unravel in December of last year when Shmooey posted a video of nine patterns of eternal pain where he didn't miss a single note, which could have been a world first, this wasn't the first time Shmooey had drawn suspicion from the community, and the video included segments where it became obvious that his finger patterns didn't match up with what was happening on screen. Once Guitar Hero fans discovered this, more videos were investigated and exposed. Shmooey initially dismissed questions of the video's authenticity, but as evidence began to stack up, he revealed that a number of his videos were faked using a variety of different methods. He has since taken all of his Guitar Hero videos down, paid back the money he received in bounties, and posted mm -hmm. a new video apologizing for his actions. Shmooey admits in the video that he was not entirely sober when everything took place. Oh the situation God. is obviously a disappointing one for everyone involved. Hopefully now that Shmooey has opened up about these events, he can get some help, the help he needs, and others will learn from his mistakes. So is this Shmooey? No. It's the other guy? Shmooey is the dude that's on the, on the uh, thumbnail. That's Frost. Now, this, that's that's also that's Frost. That's a different guy. Oh, so where's the? He's really guy? good. That's this shit. guy. That's okay. Shit. So uh, so how many times? So what? This is just somebody else's gameplay. Uh, it could be either that or it's a no fail. So like you can uh, you can there's a setting in Clone Hero where you could bot it. You just bot the whole chart. Oh, so you're not. But even it's supposed to playing. say on the bottom bot or auto. Oh, but he probably just. He probably just deleted that. Something. Just deleted that asset or something. So E over here is big, big time, uh, big time Guitar Hero guy. Here he is with his modded uh, Guitar this Hero mine, controller. This mine. <laughs> uh, so, so did you? So what? How did? Where did you hear so about I, this? So I'm friends with uh, Akai. He's like the just a uh, name drop, just a little casual he's, name drop. Yeah, yeah he's, he's my boy. He's one. He's probably one of the best uh, Guitar Hero streamers on Twitch. And um, he was the one who was talking about it first. And then it just kind of spiraled. I, I didn't watch too much of it as it was going on. But I used to watch this guy, Shmooey. Oh. And I was like, oh, he's, he's really good. But like, yeah, you get that. Sometimes when you get that notion of, is he too good? Like to the point where this doesn't look real. So it's this, perfect. Did this just happen once? I don't know. He just, no, I think it's happened multiple times. Because it sounds in his apology, it sounded like he just said I was drunk. Does that mean like that he, doesn't that does not, that mean he just turned on hacks one stream? That doesn't sound well according uh, to this Kotaku article that is referenced in the comicbook.com article, there's a weird moment at the end of one of the videos where a Windows Media Player overlay appears. <laughs> oh no. So, also, what they just showed, I don't know if you want to go back like five seconds. So He's he's hitting all of the buttons right now, and it's only the red and green. He's still hitting them. Oh yeah. So that's like a thing where people are like, "Oh, is that is that legit?" This is all referencing the uh, Carl Jobs video. This is the same guy who uncovered the whole uh, or or brought light to the whole um, uh, the, the heritage Mitchell? auction. The heritage auction thing. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, okay. oh, that's not it. But yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Uh, which we talked about on this on this show. Yeah. So uh he just talks about Billy Mitchell. Those videos are damn. It looks like he just uncovers he down, dude. a lot of uh yeah. bad things going on. 
So that's interesting. This video is 27 uh, minutes long, so you could uh, mm -hmm. check it out. I'll, I'll, link, uh, I'll link the article in the chat right now. Guitar Hero is hard. <laughs> I can't do the things that these guys do, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see all this stuff getting covered. Yeah, and E streams all of the time on twitch.tv slash guy with the hair. Live. Live. Don't do that. Uh, you know, for the longest time, my Twitter was just got the hair and it was going to some random dude. <laughs> and so, <laughs> it was someone had to point it out to me. I was like, oh, great. Well, thanks, E, for your professional opinion on Guitar Hero stuff. Stop saying, stop lying to your audience. Goodbye. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. There's, there's some very small random stuff that we could talk about. Yes. Uh, we could, like, I don't even have to read these articles. Good. I could just, yeah. So, Grand Theft Auto 6 is confirmed. Like, they are working on it. They, they came out and they said, we are working on Grand Theft Auto 6. Hallelujah. Everybody knew this already. Yeah. Well, but everybody they finally knew said it. it. Everybody knew it, but like Rockstar never like actually said it. We just all right. assumed that Grand Theft Auto Six was being worked on because that's what game companies do. When a when a successful game comes out, they immediately start working on the sequel. Well, there was a they little just, concern it wasn't going to be GTA Six and it was going to be something weird. Yeah, well, I think because GTA Five has been the Mario Kart 8 of GTA games where it just keeps on selling and sells so and, well. And, and instead of like doing DLC, they just decided they would just do like a, they would go hard on the, on the multiplayer and, yeah. and it became a weird thing. And, and everybody yeah. kind of thought GTA six would be, would be weird because of that. Um, but it sounds yeah. like they're doing a full new GTA and it's going to have all these weird, like all these like, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a full new story, and it's gonna have uh it's gonna be bigger than what they've ever done. It's gonna have all these mechanics that are new and stuff, just like every other freaking GTA game. Yeah. Here's exactly what they said: With unprecedented longevity of GTA Five, we know many of you have been asking about the next entry in the series. With every new project we embark on, our goal is always to significantly move beyond what we've previously delivered, and we are pleased to confirm that active development on the next entry in the GTA series. Is un is well underway. We look forward to sharing more with you as soon as we are ready. Uh, cool. That's going to be a while. Yeah. But I mean, and I think probably sooner than we thought, but uh, yeah. probably still a while. And also, too, like because GTA Five is about to debut on its third console generation. <laughs> right. Remember, this is an Xbox 360, PlayStation Three game, and we're now getting the PS Five, Xbox Series X version soon. Will you froze? I don't know what happened. That's a you problem because I didn't touch anything. Uh, should I leave and come back? My call quality was great. Hello. Nah, it's a you problem. Ah, damn it! All right, I'll leave and come back. <laughs> Uh, hey, Blackbird, thanks for the three months. Three months as an audio listener that usually misses this live ain't bad. No, that's pretty good. And you know what? Uh, for audio listeners here, there is Will. Hey. For, for audio listeners here, if you want to help support us, you go to twitch.tv slash Wolfden. You make a Twitch account. It's very simple. You mm -hmm. link your Amazon account. And if you have Amazon Prime, you get to support us for free. You get to keep this train going. Uh, you just If you just, and you have to renew it every month, but it's a free sub every month if you have Amazon Prime. And it helps support us greatly. All you gotta do is click a button once a month, and it gives mm -hmm. us three dollars. Uh, and we appreciate your support, just like Jay Gabriel with twelve months of support, uh, completed the first year streak. Thank you. Uh, anyway, real quick, Suicide Squad is delayed. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League has been delayed until twenty twenty three, as reported by Bloomberg. The upcoming game has been pushed back. Uh, Warner Brothers Games is gearing up for several releases this year, including Hogwarts Legacy and Lego Star Wars. Then you also have here, you also have here that there's a new Wii U game. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what the hell is it called? Yeah, it's and it's gonna have balance board support. <laughs> this video looks fucking awful. <laughs> it's like a found footage video from a development studio. Yeah, I don't know why they went with that. 
video. First look, 2022 Wii U exclusive horror game. This looks yeah atrocious. Um, uh, according, so what the hell is this called? It's called Silver Falls White Inside Its Umbra, a horror game yeah. originally revealed last September. It will include balance board support as an optional controller for movement. Uh, according to the creator, they aren't able to offer physical copies, but it will be available as an eShop exclusive in the PAL regions. And if you're wondering, Nintendo is still apparently accepting new game submissions, and the eShop is remaining open for the foreseeable future. Very weird. So if you have a Wii U game that you wanna you wanna get out there, now's the chance. It's the shop's still open, folks. Last thing, I added this last minute. Uh, one more story yeah. that I thought you would okay. be interested in. in oh yeah, I've been, I've been looking on this. Yeah, in television, admits that its Wii like Amico console may never see a release. So th- I mean, there's a lot going on. Their CEO. Uh, figurehead slash uh, messiah complex nutcase leader Tommy Tellerico is now apparently no longer in charge. He finally had to step down because I think it, they're finally realizing this weird system they've been trying to put out is not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Is it? It was it crowdfunded? Uh, it was crowdfunded several times. <laughs> oh no. It was crowdfunded. They have angel investors. They've done several rounds of crowdfunding and several rounds of investments. Uh, These funding. poor fools. Oh, These man. These poor it people. Is, yeah, it has raised over $17 million towards the cost of design, manufacturing, and marketing, as well as paying for the development of the software. Just get the, the fucking firm, thing out at this point. The firm now seeks an additional $5 million, which would... App- which would approximately seven seven to nine months, uh, I guess, get the system out in seven to nine months. God. Well, I hope it comes out. Cause, uh, I, I mean, I yeah. hope it just comes out because, like, you know, these people who worked on this Yeah, for people years, got money on it. And, and yeah. yeah, the people work at the company and stuff. That's sad. But anyway, fuck that guy. Yeah. Um, all right. That's all the news. Yes. We have we have completed news time. Yes. Uh, Which now means it now is it's time for this. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Uh, this week's tweet of the week is from Reggie. He did the wordle, and he did a wordle. He just did the wordle text. Yeah. You know, like he he did a wordle, and he posted his text. He did it in two moves. And then he said, had to try it, done, not my jam. Yeah. So he came into the trend late, dominated, and then said, not my thing, I'm out. Yeah. He's like, too easy. That's that's why that's why I love Reggie. Yeah, I don't remember what the word was this day, but uh it definitely uh, took me more than I, two. I actually played it this day. I forgot I forgot what it was. But I've only played it twice, and I don't play it often because I, I don't know how to spell. I do it every single day at midnight. Really? Yeah, I do it every single day. My in-laws are like super in on this. I actually think I lost it. I failed for the first time last night. Yeah. Or two nights ago. I failed for the first time. I, I think the sad. first time I played it, I didn't read the instructions. Now <laughs> that I did read the instructions, I like I understand it, but I'm still not a good speller. So I don't I don't do I just I just type what sounds like a word i don't think like it doesn't have to be a real word right no i know know. i mean i mean it has to be a real word but in my mind i don't have to know that it's a word it just has to have like a vowel in it somewhere and then it's a word i just i just type letters that look kind of like a word yeah my opener is stern because it has a lot of very common consonants and i feel vowels will come early later i mean will come easy later you failed on elder, yes, yes, elder. I I failed horribly on. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk uh, to new people real quick. I had a tweet of the week. Oh, you did. Never mind. We're not. Yeah. Uh, screw you guys. You guys gotta wait. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, it should be under oh. your tweet of the week. Yeah. Oh, I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. From the Tony Hawk Logos Twitter account, where you can request 
uh, phrase is being put in the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater logo. Several variations of this request by several people, and it says, fuck Tony Hawk's uh, for doing NFTs. So I saw it at, I saw it in a, in a, I saw it as two parts. I saw this one, and then I saw the next one, which was, sorry oh, yeah. to everyone who found out this way, but it's, <laughs> that's, that's how I found out. It's written in the, the yeah. Tony Hawk logo. Listen, man, these super famous people, they don't know. They just, some guy no. is like, hey, you want to do an NFT? You're going to do this thing. It's going to make you a bunch of money. Here it is. And he's like, okay, okay, where do yeah. I sign? All right. So it's not his fault. It's a I little know. his fault, but I mean, he probably doesn't know any better. Yeah. Uh, anyway, now we'll talk to you. Now people. we can talk to you people. Uh, uh, where am I? Last week's. Here it is. Uh, this was from last week. What did we talk about last week? A lot of stuff. Oh, okay. That really narrows it down. Uh, NBA (laughs) Clips says, Will's pet peeve is now mine. Characters not wearing their masks or outfits. It's the book of Boba Fett, not the book of bald Kiwi bloke. (laughs) He's right, though. (laughs) Like, I understand, like, we know what Boba Fett looks like now because of Jango Fett. But still, he doesn't have to take his helmet off when he goes to meet the Jennifer Grey uh, Twilight in the bar or when he's meeting with it. Yo, if he were to wear the helmet when he's meeting with all the other gangsters, that would have instilled more fear and intimidation in them. It's really weird because, like, we the only Mandalorian we knew for so long was Boba Fett. Yeah. And now he's like not even really a Mandalorian. <laughs> and he's and like the Mandalorians keep their helmets on because of Boba Fett. Like not yeah. in the story and just written. Like yeah. he, they're written that way because of Boba Fett. And now Boba Fett's like I'm fuck those guys. I'm taking my helmet. Yeah. I want to breathe. All of a sudden he wants to breathe. Yeah. Um I, I so a lot of people are upset about the book of Boba Fett because there's not enough Boba Fett. I actually kind of like all of the episodes that didn't have Boba Fett in it. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, do, I I think Boba Fett's fucking stupid. Well, yeah, Boba Fett is a great action figure. He's a good side character. But y- you try to make him the lead of a show. And mm-hmm. Tamura Morrison agrees with this. He talked too damn much in yeah. the show. Yeah. Yeah, so. he doesn't talk at all in the movies. Uh, yeah. He... he uh, I, I, I liked some... There were some good Boba Fett moments in the last episode, but... Uh, I didn't. I didn't see today's episode yet. Yeah, there were some good moments, so. um, but in the grand scheme of things, I was like, it was, it was, there were some really stupid moments, but there was a lot yeah. of cool moments too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, seven. Bob, your PS5 probably doesn't like the surge protector. My PS4 Pro would always yell at me, even though I never turned it off wrong until I realized it wasn't getting enough slash the right kind of power from the plug it was in. I've got my PS5 in the same specific plug my PS4 Pro liked, and it's only yelled at me after a power outage. As you'd expect, my Xbox One and Series X don't care what I do, though. Or if they do, they've never said anything. <laughs> I, I That's probably the case. Uh, yeah. But uh, is that my fault or the PlayStation's? I mean, are you really willing to buy a whole new surge protector just for your PlayStation 5? Not at all. Uh, All Hands on Deck says, oh, this is all caps. The stream that definitely isn't for these two guys, especially when they call it 16 gigabees of RAM. They deserve nothing more than a switch and leave the real gaming to the adults. Hey, you always have Mario. Crying face, laughing emoji, laughing emoji, crying face, laughing emoji. What the hell did we talk about last week? We, we did oh, talk about the, the Steam, Deck. Steam Deck. We did talk about That's the Steam why Deck. we got the freaking like chodes coming out of the woodwork to to freaking uh and I don't to, even to criticize think we, us. We didn't really criticize the Steam Deck last week, I don't think. No. I mean, I think though at worst we said, you know, this is a uh, this is more of like an enthusiast product. This is not going to be a mass market appeal thing like the Switch is. I, th- I think he just, you know, I think he thinks I was serious when I called it a gigabee. Like, I don't know what a gigabyte is. Yeah. I don't. I need, I need him to explain it to me. Yes. Please mansplain what a, what a 16 giga BS is. Yes. 
I'm not entirely clear. And please let me know in a year or two uh, how much support Valve is giving for the Steam Deck <laughs> like they did the Steam Machine and the Steam Controllers and Big Picture Mode and all those other things that they don't really talk about anymore. I saw a crazy clickbaity uh, uh, video thumbnail, like a YouTube video. That was the type. The title was "Is the Steam Deck too big?" And then the thumbnail just had a guy holding it, and it said "No," but the <laughs> fucking thing looked huge in his hand. <laughs> the thing is massive. Like that's something you can't. Yeah, you can't deny like, you that. You can't argue against. The thing is big, and you know I understand why it's big. I'm sure Valve had to make it big. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that it's big, but the fucker is big. I'm about That's just how it is. I'm about to play around with the Aya Neo. Yeah. Which is like a you know, the, uh, it's a similar type of device, but that thing is $1000 more. So I after looking at that, I totally see the value of the Steam Deck. Yeah. Cuz it's $400. Got opposed yeah. to $1400. Um, but anyway, our own dad commented, "Will Wolf damn it, recognized at a Starbucks near you." Did you talk about it on the podcast? I did not you talk did. about it on the podcast. I didn't even think I talked about it to him. <laughs> Are you sure you, you didn't? I didn't. I didn't mention it on the podcast. Interesting. So uh, yeah, I got recognized at a Starbucks, not too far from my own house. Not gonna tell you where because I don't want you creeps trying to find me. But that was fun. That was nice. And now you got to move. Yeah. Uh, he all and uh, then Fred. The guy who pulls the comments also noted, oh, geez, he's found the comment section. <laughs> he's known. He just kind of, it, it's easy to to, to he, overlook him because uh, he doesn't have an icon or anything. Yeah, he is. He's just pure chaos. <laughs> <laughs> and he usually comments multiple times. Yes. Uh, Chubbs the Owl says, no one cares about, f- oh, no, this is a quote. No one cares about February. I was born in February. Can confirm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, it's the so short was. Month. It's very easily overlooked. So was our dad. That is true. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to take up some problems with yeah. that. All right. We're in the chat real quick before we yeah. got to leave. I got things to do. Uh, do we have any... Uh, nope. I want to say super chats to catch up on. No, no yeah. super chats. <laughs> <laughs> um... Anyway, uh, uh, Indie List says, imagine holding the Steam Deck with one hand while you wipe your ass. No, you put the thing down. Yeah. Like yeah, when, you when put, I'm on my laptop, put it down. Yeah, the, take switch care goes of business. On, the switch goes on the cistern while I take care of business. Right. <laughs> Will, I don't think people will find you if they knew you live near a Starbucks. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> True. But I didn't want to get specific. Also, I think my town has at least four has at least like four Starbuckses. Titus pra- Praetor says, "Have you guys seen the drama regarding React content? I saw a little bit of it. Um, so there's so there's a lot of Twitch streamers that will react to stuff like that. Other people make like YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah. And there was one specific YouTuber who like threw a shit fit about it, and all of the React." content guys were ganging up on him and it turned out that that guy who was who threw the shit fit used to do react content so it's like <laughs> it's like kind of pot calling the kettle black but yeah uh i do i do think react content is a little weird on twitch because it's like um you are like especially some of these guys they get like hundreds of thousands of views concurrently yeah. and then they watch a youtube video from a small person and then that person just that's like a that's like a lot of money for a small creator that they're just not getting now. Yeah. In a lot of cases it brings them a lot of good publicity, but in some cases it doesn't. So it's like a it's like kind of a crapshoot. Yeah. Uh this is also coming right after a bunch of Twitch streamers were just like watching Naruto, watching The Lord of the Rings, like just just blatantly doing copyright infringement, which is a little yeah. different. So I don't know. Um, wasn't there some kind of controversy recently? That's what we were just talking about. That's what we were just yeah. saying. So I don't know. I th- I think it's really I th- I think it's uh really weird. 
it's weird territory. Of course, these React streamers, they're very popular and they have really big followings and everybody loves them. So when they say, no, it's totally fine that we just that we just free boot off of other people. It's not it. That's not entirely true. Like, like they are kind of free booting off of other people. Of course, it's going to like, of, of course, we're all against those free booters who just upload YouTube videos to their Facebook page. Like, mm-hmm. well, there's that famous guy who did it a long time ago, like uh, SoFlo Antonio or something. Yeah. Uh, of course, that guy's an asshole. But people who just react to stuff on Twitch, they're cool. It's weird. And, like, I, I'm guilty of it, too. I watch, like, a freaking, like, coffee YouTubers on Twitch and react to that. But that's just because it's what people do. So it's not, yeah. you know, it's like a weird gray area. I'm not saying that it's totally cool that people do it, but it's... it's uh. I guess it's not cool and it's not bad. It's a weird gray area. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But but there's definitely a conversation to be had around it. Anyway, Titus gives us a sub. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Kate McCat, sorry if y'all covered this already, uh, but did you see the supposed leak about the Arkham games coming to Switch? Uh, We did not cover it, but I did see that leak. Uh, I'm surprised they are not on the Switch already because you can get those games uh, little, literally everywhere. Right. But uh, I would welcome it and I would definitely play those games again on the Switch. Those are games that I can just pick up and play without even thinking. All right. Lord Raven says, question for Will. What are your thoughts on DC's announcement of Dark Crisis today? Uh, personally, I'm hoping they actually give us a good Nightwing JLA story and don't blue ball us again. Uh, I don't know. I because they're specifically because they're calling it a crisis, which they said they were not going to do any more crises anymore. When DC does an event called Crisis, whatever, it's a big deal. Like there's no coming back from it. So we'll see how it goes. DC is kind of in a weird state where they're trying to introduce the next generation of these heroes while also keeping the previous generation of the heroes around. So. I think this will kind of tie into that sort of thing. Um, I won't know until it actually comes out. I'm actually very behind on all DC stuff that isn't Batman. So (laughs) that's where I am. Ethel says, so since this episode of the podcast is on Wednesday, can we call it Wolf Den Live? No, no. I was going to do that. It's dead. (laughs) It's dead. We killed him. Anyway. Guys, we're done. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast whoa, is whoa. every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. We had a special thing this week, but don't expect it any. Don't expect that to change anytime in the future. Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Podcast. so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Looking for somebody to raid. I don't know. I don't know who. Um. Hmm. Mm-hmm-hmm. He is on. Hey, watch some good Guitar Hero content, huh? There, there you go. go. Uh, we will see you later. I will hopefully be streaming tomorrow because I will not be here all weekend. Uh, say hi to Akai. Uh, Tell him your friends with Eve. Uh, and then name drop E for some reason. He'll know that. He'll be like, cool. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll see you uh, later. Thanks for being here on this weird, wacky Wednesday. Uh, goodbye, yeah. everybody. Bye.